Hi, my name's Armstrong, and welcome to the back of his teardown lab. It feels like a while since we've torn something down, and I have here one of those HSBC dongles. I think we've done one of these in the past, but that's fine because I've got a slightly different mission for this one. It's dead, you know, I'm holding the button, we don't get anything on the screen. But I was wondering if there's a way of trying to get power into it. I know it's got an internal battery, but perhaps we could see if we can just measure the voltage of anything that's in it and see if we can piggyback that. Because I, I do wonder that if you have these and they're on their way out, if you could revive them. And to be honest, if this one's totally dead, it might not be revivable because it might rely on something that's coded in at the time the battery's fitted. But I probably can get hold of more of these, which are semi-alive, and that would uh, certainly be something we could try if we can formulate a way of doing it. So I'm just sliding this Stanley knife blade in and it's getting deeper and deeper and I'm being quite cautious because of course I am dragging that blade towards my hand. Oh, and we can see the battery right away. Awesome. That's absolutely awesome. Now these things of course are becoming phased out because banks are using apps more. Um, even where they've got traditional online banking dongles like this, the codes are actually created on the apps and, and, and passed through the same systems in the same way. Or they're you know using text messaging and all that sort of stuff. So I suspect we won't be having these for very much longer. But for now, certain accounts still require them. Yes, that's nice and easy getting that off. You could almost get this off and actually be able to replace it if you take a bit of care. In fact, you probably could still stick that on now. So the issue is getting the battery out without disconnecting power. That would be your, your, your main drive if you're trying to do this without uh, losing everything on your existing one. So I'm going to go a little bit further. Now I suspect this chassis is accessed actually through this side, so if you try to cut that side you're, you're obviously going to have a whole world of pain. But let's see at least if the battery is accessible. And that looks awfully a lot like programming pin header there. Perhaps they have a pogo pin system. So maybe the battery's fitted and then something goes on there and checks it all out. And this is a very interesting battery snap and it feels like the battery actually goes in that way. So I will try to see as if we were going to remove this cell. I'm not seeing too much motion. In fact, it doesn't look like it wants to slide at all. I'm going to go for another approach here. I think it would be wise to make a cut so that we can see from the edge what this hole looks like, what this whole thing looks like. That way we can assess the situation better and I suspect sliding the battery out is probably going to be the way to go if you can just notch this out. This junior hacksaw blade just held in the hand seems to do a pretty good job and you can see I'm nearly through. The only problem is I'll need a lateral cut along here really <laughs> to not uh, damage it too much so that's going to be tricky. I suppose you could potentially just cut along there with a coping saw but we'll figure out how to cope with this in a moment. I can tell you now without any doubt in my mind that this piece is solid all the way through. So the only way to truly get to it would be to delaminate this, at least on this edge, enough that we can pull this piece of plastic out. I really hope I don't destroy this. I don't actually have another spare thing right now for this experiment. I've got way too many videos sitting undone because of similar delays where stuff hasn't worked out. So let's hope it goes okay. I'm being very cautious not to cut the membrane, so I'm just sliding it between. 
Now we do know there's some sort of PCB among all this lot somewhere. I'm almost tempted, you know, just to kind of keep going a little bit and see if we can just see what the battery's doing from this side. Oh, oh my gosh, it is an actual PCB in there. The membrane is actually above a PCB. I just assumed it would be one of these stuck-on membranes with an edge connector. Who'd have thunk that? Well, that does that does make things a little bit trickier, but I'm going to use the opportunity now to slide my side cutters in and chop those edge rails. I think we're just going to have to go in deep. I think we're where we need to be. So you can see that bit of plastic there, that's the edge that we've been trying to remove. So now with side cutters, I'm just going to go and snip through that last little bit that we hacksawed through. You can see that clips nicely. Now you probably could hacksaw through it, but it's too many pieces to keep out of the way that you could damage. But with the side cutters, I can see the PCB, I can see the member, I can see everything. I saw everything. Let's just pop that bit of plastic out, look. Nice. Yes, good job. And the buttons feel like they would still work fine. Mm, now we're really getting there, aren't we? A bit sticky. It's all a bit sticky. So look at the battery there. So if you were going to play with this, you can see the positive of the battery and then underneath the negative. Now that rail here is probably negative. It would be very odd to put this together in that way where you'd short the battery out pushing it in. So really, if you're going to apply power, you could probably just apply it between here and there. And in fact, I'm going to solder some wires on just to see if we can power this up from the bench. But before we do, let's do a quick sanity check here on the voltages. Oh, it's barely managing a volt. All the dongle action, all the time. You've come to the right place. Ouch. Last bit solder, my positive. This is very heavy wiring for this. Moment of truth, we're gonna turn this over. Bench power supply, I'm just adjusting to three volts. Well, thinking about adjusting it. Let's call it 2.9, shall we? And we're gonna flick it on. Power is on. No! certainly appears not to be drawing any current whatsoever. <laughs> okay, I think we're going to stage two now where we just yank the battery and see what happens. And figure out how it's all plumbed in. Yep, definitely a three volt, regular three volt lithium cell. Now if you recall, we were measuring one volt from the contacts we were measuring at, so let's just see what this cell is actually saying it is 1.4 out of circuit so is it actually in circuit where we were measuring so this little edge rail here and we're going to go straight into the middle it certainly looks like it is so you've got to assume it was just a very dead in fact look at that though maybe we had this the wrong way around no we didn't or did we oh <laughs> dear <laughs> I forgot which way it came out. I'm guessing it was that way. Ooh, I just applied power and look, we actually do have something. So I'm not sure why it's reacting so differently with that pa uh, battery out, but you get to see the screen. There's definitely some interesting pictures here. Look, it's like a little DP plus lock, new pin, config, all the numbers one and two. However, it does seem pretty out of sorts when I press the buttons. Oh, no, it's gone out. So normally you'd hold this down. I think it is done. It would normally say something like HSBC or pin, and then you'd put in a pin when you hold down this green button. So definitely seems to be a bit unhappy. Whoa, OK. Um, my bench supply was unhappy because I was shorting something out. Let's try that again. So we're going to put the positive power on, bang. 
I'm just going to hold it there. Holding down the power, holding down the yellow. I'm almost certain there's no sequence for this. It's it's going to be field programmed. It'll literally be getting set up at the uh, factory that makes them and it will be by those connectors. So if you do have one of these though, I think while it's alive, you could definitely keep it alive um, by soldering two very fine Kynar wires, one to this rail here and one to this contact, applying uh, three volts, sliding that battery out and then swapping it back in though with a, a fresh one. And in case you want to do that, it's a CR2016 and then that way you don't have to wait the uh, Gosh, it's at least a week it takes them to send you one of these. I mean, I know you can pick them up in branch if they have them. But this could be another way. And what have you got to lose if you know it's definitely going to die? Although maybe you should do it <laughs> with plenty of time to spare in case you don't succeed. Lock, new, pin, conf. Everything's there again. Pressing the buttons. Nada. But it could be a sequence. For all you know, you might have to just do 888881 yellow star. It could, it could be any kind of sequence if it's a manual one. I think we've got nothing to lose, though, than delving a little bit further now. So we've done the potential how to swap a battery in it if you needed to routine. I think the bit I would be most interested in right now is to take that screen keyboard part out. That should reveal more of its secrets to us. It's funny how I cannot remember anything about the time we did this before, other than we did do it. <laughs> probably a security chip on it or something. I'm just going to go a bit more violently now because I don't care as much. Now HSBC say that 65% of this is recyclable. so. Let's see which 65% that is. So it's a Vasco, the auto, auto, authentication company. And you can see that's the simple screen and you've got a couple of battery contacts there underneath. And then you've got your LCD screen by the little ribbon connector. And it's heat welded on, so that's kind of cute. Ouch. Got to be a little bit careful with that then. Just let's pop those welds, see if we can pop the welds and get this thing out. Doesn't want to go, you know. Doesn't want to go. I'm going to take them out with a bit of heat. Fight fire with fire. Where are we? Where are we? We've got some more, have we? Yeah. Fight fire with fire. Just one more. Hopefully I've weakened these enough that they'll have a bit of give in them now. So let's wipe that. Let's wipe that tip off before it starts stinging. A bit of gentle prizing, and we're out. So it does show that you would have a lot of difficulty getting a battery in the legit way. <laughs> and indeed, those are the Pogo Pin programming headers, and we're seeing here J1. RST and then something else. So maybe jumper one, reset, it could be just the programming interface. And then you have here a bunch of test points and they are marked TP, TP4, TP5, TP3, TP1. Not sure on the order there. You've got a little crystal. Crystal oscillator for the microcontroller that's in this. And can we see a speed? Or a frequency rather? Not really, but it does say KDS1B. You could probably look that up if you're curious. And you have a little microcontroller which is directly connected to the LCD. No drivers needed, but it's been a long time since we've needed a driver or anything like that. More test points actually here. You see these few here. Surface mount resistors, one capacitor, one missing capacitor, not needed anymore. An actual transistor. So that's possibly wired up in such a way for the power on so when it sleeps. In fact, which is the power on? The power on is that bottom right corner, which is this track here. I wouldn't be surprised if that transistor is connected directly to that key in some fancy way. 
Although you would think there's probably a sleep mode in that microcontroller. Yeah, yeah, not quite sure on that. And there's your battery. And there are two contacts here, which is interesting. So it's doubled up. Let's put a continuity tester on that to see how it goes. Yeah, they are all connected together. I was wondering if it's some sort of little sophisticated get you, uh, if you're trying to like take the battery out sneakily, if one of the contacts disconnected, it would disconnect the whole thing sort of deal. But no, that doesn't seem to be the case. I do have a fresh CR2302, <laughs> no chance you'd get that in. It's just so big. I'm not sure there's anything else to learn, but I'm quite impressed this thing has got a PCB date of 2010. So it's, it's actually quite a long-lived piece of technology, and I'm sure they were out before then. But yeah, these bank uh, dongles come in different colours, different flavours. This is an HSBC one. I don't know if you've got uh, any uh, different ones for your bank, but made by the you know, look exactly the same, made by the same company, this Vasco one. But yeah, I'd be interested to know about that. This is revision 4.2. And they do have all these weird little functions. Sometimes you put your pin in, and instead of pressing the power button to get you that code, you have to press 3, or you press 1, or it, it kind of makes you dance around the pad a little bit sometimes to generate these different types of um, coded numbers. I always wonder if it's adding a different bit of salt or something like that when you're using those. Who knows? Well, interesting stuff. Not sure there's anything salvageable other than maybe the uh, crystal here. I, I think it's always useful to keep hold of the crystals if you haven't um, got one. Maybe the transistor too. Who knows? As ever, thanks for watching. <laughs>